So here it is at last, the all new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Whatever the way you look at it, this car is an exciting new entrant to the sports car arena. Chevy is still being cagey over a few details, but let's see how the Corvette squares up to competitors so far. There are all sorts of arguments over which models are the C8's closest rivals, but the Porsche 911 has to be a consideration, especially as both of these cars are designed to be used every day and not just as occasional toys. Being mid-engined, the C8 must also expect to come up against tough competition from more exotic machines such as the McLaren 570S. It might be the baby of McLaren's range, but there's nothing junior about this car's performance. So let's kick off with the obvious top trump figure of power. The Corvette is powered by a naturally aspirated 6.2 litre V8 engine, capable of producing 495 horsepower and 470 pounds-feet of torque in LT2 trim. The Porsche 911 Carrera S gets its grunt from a rear-mounted turbocharged 3 litre flat 6, good for 443 horsepower and 390 pounds-feet of torque. McLaren's 570S hosts a mid-mounted 3.8-litre twin-turbocharged V8, packing 562 horsepower, making it the most powerful car of this bunch. While 0 to 60 times only give a snapshot of a car's performance, it does afford bragging rights amongst friends. Chevrolet haven't given an exact figure on this yet, but assuming you tick the right option boxes such as the LT2 and Z51 packages, you'll be hitting 60 miles per hour in less than 3 seconds. The best Porsche can muster is 3.5 seconds, remembering that this is the Carrera S model, and with McLaren clocking 2.9 seconds. It looks like the 570S wins this round, but a more interesting figure that many McLaren rivals struggle to match is a 0 to 124 mile per hour time of just 9.5 seconds. Top speed of the Corvette is to be confirmed, but the McLaren tops out at 204 miles per hour and the 911 at 191 miles per hour. Looks are subjective, so I'll leave that to the comments section below. But if you love Porsche's classic teardrop design, the latest car retains that heritage, although it is far wider than before thanks to adopting the turbo model's wide body. The McLaren is a very mature machine to look at, purposeful, sleek and effective. The 2020 Chevrolet Corvette is outright aggressive with sharp creases and overstated air intakes. I wouldn't say it's beautiful, but it certainly turns heads. This is a big change for Corvette, although the design has just enough throwbacks to the past to be recognised by the Mark's faithful followers. A car can be devastatingly handsome from the outside, but it's the interior where you'll be spending most of your time. I think this is the Corvette's Achilles heel, because while it looks interesting, it appears to have some ergonomic flaws. We know from other cars that have square steering wheels that they look interesting, but aren't all that functional. And also, having a long row of buttons out of the driver's field of view is going to make it harder to use those on the move. Angling the infotainment system toward the driver is a good move, though. The latest 992 Porsche 911's cabin is a prime example of great ergonomics and high quality materials. Everything falls to hand with ease, and the design is free from clutter and excessive switch gear. It's the most practical interior here with a 2 plus 2 configuration. The McLaren 570S's interior quality sits below the Porsche, but ergonomically above the Corvette. It's very driver focused, prioritising good visibility and seating position. Nobody has really driven the new C8 Corvette yet, so the title of best handling car is a little inconclusive. The Corvette in its sportiest trim is boasting 400 pounds of downforce and some sticky Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. However, Chevrolet elected to keep the C8's costs down by keeping construction primarily made out of aluminium as opposed to other lightweight materials. It tips the scales at £3,366. The Porsche chassis is a beautifully stable platform that really makes the most of its rear engine layout. It's such a predictable yet playful car that has a broad spectrum of assets on both road and track. However, its curb weight is £16 more than the Corvette. It's the McLaren which is the lightest at £3,186 thanks to a carbon fibre tub and lightweight construction. It's a very nimble car as a result, something that the Porsche can't and the Corvette will unlikely be able to match. It's an utter joy on both road and track, highlighting the incredible engineering that goes on at McLaren. 
Price always plays a huge part in the world of sports cars, and this is arguably the Corvette's greatest asset. An exact figure hasn't been announced, but the C8 is said to start at under $60,000, although that won't feature the LT2 trim and other performance options. Either way, it's a lot of bang for your bucks, something its rivals will find difficult to live with. The Porsche is very much a premium product, with high quality materials taking priority over the bottom line, but its price tag is a princely $113,000. Built in Germany, its total isn't helped by US taxes. The McLaren is the most potent of the bunch, but it comes at a price. $192,000 is required to purchase one of Woking's finest, over three times that of an entry-level Corvette. All things considered, the C8 is incredible value for money on paper. It stays true to the values of the C1 in that it's an attainable performance car for the masses. The Porsche and McLaren are premium exotics that almost live in a different world, but it's impressive that we're now talking about a Corvette in the same breath. I think a back-to-back -back test will see the Corvette outclassed in some respects, but as soon as you factor in its price, what else do you compare it to? Right now, the C8 might just be the best value mid-engine sports car out there. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk.